I want to show you some different tips and tricks we can use in Fusion to really speed up our modeling. So um, these are based on our sketching. So I'm gonna start off by just drawing a, um, a little box there so we can work off of that. So I'm gonna use the top down on our view cube here. And we're gonna go up to create a sketch and click on the working plane. Now, two point rectangle starts off on the origin position or the datum position as it's um, known as in the machine world. And I'm gonna draw a box 100 millimeters square. So I'm just gonna type in 100 and hit the tab key to select the other dimension, hit 100 there and hit return. And that gives us a box, oops. So now we can rotate that around, and give that a bit of volume there. So I'm just gonna finish sketch and then I'm gonna push Q on the keyboard, select this face and we're gonna make this, let's make this 20 millimeters thick. So now we've got something to work off of. Okay, so what I want to look at first is some construction lines. Now, the UI of Fusion changes a lot, so the icons might not be in the same place I am uh, selecting them here, but we're gonna start off by looking at the mid plane and see what this does. So let's say I want to draw a feature that comes up from the middle of this box in the center there. It's, it might not seem obvious how we're gonna do that at first, but that's where we use some of these constructs. So we're gonna come in and select mid plane, and it's given us um, some options here. We can select which plane we want to work off of, but we can also select the faces of the part as well. So I'm gonna select two faces, this one here, and this one here. And you can see that it's drawn our plane right in the middle of our part there. So I'm just gonna okay that. And now we can sketch onto this plane and we know our sketch is gonna be in the center of our block. So let's just demonstrate that. So I'm gonna go back into create a sketch. We to select our mid plane. So now we've got different planes available here. We can also sketch on faces, of course, but I'm gonna select our mid plane now. And now we can draw straight on that. So I'm just going to select my line tool, which is our on the keyboard. And I'm going to just draw a quick triangle there like so. And now when we finish sketch, we can see that that triangle is right in the middle there of our mid plane. So, that's how we can work on that. And of course we can also add a thickness to this the same way we added it to the block by using Q on the keyboard. And then we can create um, our parts in the middle like that. So I find this really speeds up quite a lot of our design process. But if we want to put this plane somewhere else that's not on the center line, not in that mid plane, we can also use offset plane. So what this is, we go up to construct and we click on offset plane. And then we can select which plane we want to offset or we can select faces of our part. So I'm gonna select a face and now it gives us this plane here that we can add to our, our part here and we can move it about. So let's make this say 30 millimeters in from the end. So minus 30 return. Now we can sketch directly on that plane. So before I demonstrated one way to do it, this time we're gonna select the plane first and then go to create sketch or we can go to create sketch, then select the plane like I did the mid plane. So with that plane selected, we're gonna to go to create a sketch and now we're drawing 30 millimeters off that edge. So put out on the keyboard for the line tool, we'll draw us another triangle just to demonstrate like this, finish sketch. And now you can see we have another sketch as 30 millimeters in. So quite often you'll find yourself needing this all the time and this offset plane um, is really, really important to use. And honestly, I don't really use any of these others. We've got lots of choice here. We've, um, we can change our planes from tangential plane, for example. We can add a plane at an angle, which is useful. We do use that one. But you'll find that offset plane is the one we use the most. And all of these work the same way, by the way. So I've demonstrated the offset plane, the tangential plane, and um, planes at angles, etc., all work the same way. So that's how we produce different parts inside our our job and slightly offset from where we need and they give us those weird angles that we might be struggling to work out. And we also don't need to sit here and work out maths to work out where these points are because Fusion 360 does all that for us. Okay, let's just remove our sketch there so I can so show you another tip. So to do that, I'm just gonna go into our browser here and just turn off and hide those sketches. So they're still there, I'm just hiding them. Okay, so this next tip is how we make complicated cuts in our material. So say for example, we've got a complex shape we want to cut into our block. Now we can 
certainly draw it and model it that way, or we can just remove it. So I'm just gonna go up to create on this menu. Now remember, the UI does change quite a lot, so it might not be where I'm showing it right now. And I'm just going to make a sphere, for example. Let's have a sphere. I'm gonna select my top plane and just draw a little sphere in the middle there. So what this is doing at the moment, if I could just click some join, we can see we've got the, the little bulge, little bubble in the middle there. But if we want to have um, a semicircular bore in here, for example, we can go to the operation here and change this to cut. And I'm just gonna click on okay there. So now you can see we've got this spherical hole in the middle of our part there. So to draw that, to model that might be a bit difficult and we can just use a shape um, to cut another shape. So if you've got a complex internal cut you need to make, you can always make a solid 3D model of the shape of that. Uh, feature and then remove it from the other parts by using the cut feature. So I find this really useful. Uh, if I find that I can't work out how to get a particular shape, quite often it's easier to make the internal shape as a model, insert the model into the part and then cut it like this. So it removes the material instead of adds to it. Okay, let's delete that. Okay, so for this next tip, I need to remove our box. So I'm just got to a new design to give us a clean slate to work from. I'm gonna to go top down view and then uh, create sketch and click my working plane there. Okay, so when we're line drawing, so we're out on the keyboard or this icon up here for the line, we have, as you can see, we, we select in the angle and the length of each line here. And we can switch between them by using the tab key. So we can edit these. So if we want this line here that's highlighted in blue to be 30 millimeters, we just type in 30 and we can change the angle. Let's say we want the angle to be 55 degrees or we can change the angle to 100 degrees or whatever. We can use the tab key to switch between the two before we push anything on the mouse to lock that in place. So that's how we accurately change those lines. And while we're talking about the line tool, I'm gonna to start my line tool again, push out on the keyboard. There's a few ways we can finish our line here. So um, once we've got a few lines and we want to stop drawing, as you can see, it's always, always tied onto the last uh, node, so we can continue drawing. But to exit that, there's a few ways we can do it. We can push the escape key, and that works to uh, stop our drawing. Going back to the line tool, we can also double click, and that stops um, drawing as well. And there is also a third way, and that is we can see this little tick here, we can click on this little tick and that also finishes the line drawing. So that's how we use our line tool and switch between different values and lengths to accurately sketch our part. The next thing I want to show you is our selection tool. Now, if you're used to Photoshop or different editing software, you're probably used to seeing a selection box such as this, so we can select our parts, which is um, Fusion also does. And that allows us to copy and paste also. But Fusion goes one step further. If we draw from left to right, we have an orange selection box, but if we draw from right to left, it's yellow. So what this does, this allows us to select parts of our drawing or uh, the whole drawing. So if we go from right to left, it's selecting just that node there. But if we went from left to right, it would select that whole vertices. So I'll demonstrate on this line over here. If we select from left to right over an angle such as that, it's just highlighting the parts that was inside that selection box. So if I select the whole line there, it's only selecting this line and not that one because this line wasn't completely in the selection box, you see. Now, if we go the opposite way, if we go right to left, and we go over a partial line, it selects everything. So this way, uh, we have two different types of selection, and that's really useful when we're sketching as well. So there's a few quick tips on different ways that we can use sketching within Fusion 360, and you'll find that really speeds up your workflow by using this as you work.